in this video we are going to convert our uh, last remaining classes into the proper rest assured framework and we're going to complete the framework and basically we'll add a assertion in the end all right so we have a complete api automation framework now if more data like uh, like 100 and 50 more 50 plus fields then i would suggest json file but then json file convert that json file into a map to modify certain data okay uh, we'll take this in q a uh, so uh, i think uh, uh, we are almost done. Uh, let's create assert action completion. So here, uh, let's get the response object, right? So that we can verify assert equals. Okay, uh, so this part is done. Uh, now we can easily use our assert action for that again we have to create a assert action class object in base test right uh, i think everything is done uh, static is not added uh, ha, ha, ha. similarly uh, we need api action to get data from uh, because uh, we need JSON path, right? We were using JSON path there. So for that, we will use uh, generics, which we discuss in best practices. What we need to, so we verified the status code. Now let's verify the body. So for that, I need to assert action string verification here. and uh, here i would use a uh, string string kind of thing you need description because status code is clear but in body part sometimes we will so we need to know which field we are verifying so for that i'm adding a description also And now we can verify hazard action dot verify uh, and uh, in here we need to create an object for API actions also. So this is kind of object page object model we were making object repository for page objects here we create page or repository in base test for payloads and keywords api actions api actions and i think we are mostly done apart from data util i think everything is covered with this So we need to get data API action API action dot get data from JSON path uh, supply response JSON path as name and uh, verify this that this name is equal to the name which we are supplying here, right?
Okay, since the response of this is unknown at that time, it is known at the runtime when we get the response for now. Uh, we are saving the name response. Name equal to Okay, so I think we're mostly done. And this is how you can change your code in something like that, right? So I think uh, every part of the code is has been modified apart from data utils. I think data utils code is not written. Let's complete that also so that end-to-end -end framework is finished. Then I can share everything with you guys. Yes, I'm gonna do that once it is created and everything is done. Okay, so uh, the final thing is Philo library for Philo, just go for Philo. And you, on the front page itself, you will find the code to read anything from Excel file. This is the code to read anything from Excel file. You just need to get, give the Excel file path and you can extract data based on ID. So whatever is your ID, which is your name in row and then value is in. So just copy this and make some changes based on our requirement, right? So public static. So I would create a data util get data from Excel, let's say, or get data from test, get test data. The return would be string and get data from test data file something like that right and our parameter would be sheet name because this is an excel so we need a sheet name so string sheet name right and a string id id is basically to give the uniqueness for the data which you want to extract and a string field which field you want to extract if there are because uh, one row has multiple columns, right? So which field you need to extract? Once that is done, just copy paste that code and uh, make changes. Make sure you select the Philo libraries only in import. Surrounds uh, always surround this code in try catch. Okay, and uh, make changes based on this uh, because we need to change this name to sheet name. So for that, we use this sheet name, right? And then plus again, appender ID. We need to change the ID to the ID which we want. Let's uh, where ID is equal to. So this works on SQL. So when you write SQL query, we write in single quotes and then provide the data, right? So for that, uh, we will provide our ID. I think we're mostly done. Single quotes plus ID plus single quotes and yes, and uh, get field data. This is basically the field name. And this would be not system dot output. This would be our result.
and at the end of this we want to return our result okay so this is this is how you can read data so here uh, i will provide the sheet name uh, the field which i want to extract data from and the column name and based on that i can fetch any data so i can show you the example where we were extracting using base test base url right this was this was again a constant these two values are again constant uh, sorry hard coded right now so for that i will create an excel file uh, let's create use the excel file of uh, other projects i don't have it Well, do you have a sheet uh, got it so this would be let's say i would create an empty empty spreadsheet yeah so it mostly contain id and uh, yeah base url yeah so let's now name this rest assured right for for github github repo and id and value okay it could be anything this can change okay uh, because you have to parameterize these two value can change and this field value is value where let's say you have different values uh so if you want to use as a data parameterization you can use it data provider also have a different different values and then provide different different values in the data and uh, use for loop to uh, insert data at run time so uh, let's use it for base path and token right replace this base path and token i think within 5 minutes it will be done this once this is done save as where is my repo backend f for backend save as f backend sources the best as data right okay so file is created data is inserted now we need to uh, change code in data utils to provide the path right this is the path so now uh, make it to make it system independent and platform independent Uh, we use system variables system dot get user system dot what is the file get property user dot dir okay to get the user directory and then file file dot part separator this this is a system dependent part separator character so the path of this resources uh, file is if you refresh this You would see 
test data resources like this is user directory under that resources under that test data dot ekt so user dir slash path slash resources slash test data excellent six right okay i think this is the excel x x uh you need to make sure that you are not using this file while uh, extracting data otherwise it, it can cause issue okay uh now we need to add this code in our base test replace this with data utils uh, get data from excel file the sheet name is github repo id is this url and the field is value similarly we need to change the value of authorization token and this time it would be token right so uh, i think everything is done in this framework uh, i will pause this here to verify that the code is working let's see there are some configuration issue base uri cannot be null i think there is something wrong while extracting the data back end i think path was wrong wait wait data util slash back end slash resources slash path slash data Okay, let's try this again. No records found. I the file is being graded, but nothing is found. Let's let's see if the file. Data is actually correct. GitHub path base path base URI URI okay yeah. Base URL. Correct. Okay, let's try. Okay, so I think everything is fine. The name is different. Name uh, coming is wrong because now we have created name here and there also uh, in request payload, I guess. Right. Yeah. So uh, for that, I will create a public getter and setter. Get what happened? Set name. Get name. Uh, can you? Yeah. Uh, don't set the username here. You are setting it here. Just 
in the github repo of that afterwards repo dot set na dot don't set it repo dot set ne uh, 23rd line just remove 23 oh here again oh sorry yeah. just remove this you don't need to do it now actually this is needed but not like this way we have to get repo even right? with the above, above method yeah now it should work okay so everything is added in the framework level everything is set up the final pitch is basically your report right so for your report to install it the process is pretty simple you can go to this link right uh, this link uh, if you open it gives you a different ways to install allure on different system if you are linux do this if you are mac if you install allure and if you are in windows open powershell and do scoop install allure uh, i have already done that uh, scoop install allure powershell open powershell and once scoop uh, install allure is done and you type uh, scoop you would see something like that this so once that is done generation part is simple uh when you run the report let's say i run the report using maven so for that uh i can choose run as maven build and here i can give the command clean test okay Thing is that. Okay, I think we need to add plugins also. Okay, Pramod, do we have time for this? Like uh, configuration plugins and then a low report. Uh, you okay. can add it. Uh, yeah, you can add it uh, using the GitHub repo. Yeah, open GitHub the GitHub. It's all already there. Yeah. GitHub repo. Yeah. Do you have? Uh, test ng xml uh, plugin also i don't think so we added that we have added i think guess can you check out yeah okay work, what's the workshop 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 so form dot xml last part xml yes so the configuration part is needed i think let's copy d after the dependency build yeah to build right so build to build after dependency uh if it is done now uh we can create an xml file right this Where is testng? Testng create a testng XML file. Uh, in XML file we have integration test. Um, should be one. And uh, let's run this. Is there any error? okay i think this is running and uh, if everything works fine you will see some uh, reports in allure uh, what you need to do just copy this path to see the report and uh, hit open cmd and do allure serve 
this block. Uh, don't worry, guys. Instructions are already in the GitHub rep, so uh, everything is there. So now you can see the. We'll report. also share that. So this is how you can see. So right now you can not see multiple things related to LR. So for that, you just need to add some tags in your test. So in here, you can add multiple LR tags like severity. Description. Always select the allure one. You may meta dot allure. Okay, and what else? Priority. What can we set up? Allure, allure, allure. So you can add a couple of more like epic story, anything that you do like agile most. Yeah. Feature also. Feature, feature so also. Feature, so this is uh, repo feature, right? So uh, this is how you can do it. And now if you run this again uh, and then view the relio report, you will see all these things in the report also. And uh, so there is a, also a tag called steps. So if you want uh, to log every step, uh, you can use step also. Perfect, perfect, yes. Right. Let's run. Yeah, so let's run it again. Right now, if you see this test case, you'd see all these severity which we added. Everything history etc. will be available when you run multiple transaction. Okay, I think this all is right. all we have for frameworks. Mm -hmm. And let me quickly give you what I did. So earlier, if you saw, we had something which is not clear. Right, there was uh, no logger here, so everything is added in terms of identifying which is which feature is this what is the severity of this test case and etc uh, done through lr okay and then we updated all those test cases uh, we created all those classes in api constant we added repo uh, endpoint because for now we actually creating a repo right but uh, as, like we have if we have multiple endpoint you keep on adding those endpoints here and you're going to uh, use these endpoints directly in your test classes so uh, under dot post or dot put or dot patch, whatever you have, you can directly use this. We actually created a common spec, repo spec, uh, for having all the common functionality in base test, where we added base URI configuration or logger, header and everything. Okay, and uh, then to manage payloads, we have payload manager as a request payload. Here we can keep creating our payload using Pojo model. And if it is having a more than 50 pins, I would suggest a JSON file methods. And so we created a JSON Pojo model here and modified the JSON using JSON. And once that is done, we use that in our integration test, right? Using request payload object, which we added in base test. And then two other things we added, uh, test ng assertions. For that, we created a class uh, assert actions. And since we are gonna use it for API framework, uh, we modified the keywords using uh, to use our API related stuff like verify creation status code, verify bot response body, right? And uh, for API actions, since we're gonna need a lot of JSON path data, uh, we created a generic function. And then uh, based on the parameters provided in get data JSON, we are getting it, uh, we, so we can get any kind of data, and that we can that is that is used here, okay. Uh, while getting the name data, and then verification part, we are setting something before before our test case is running. So we are setting a name, 
and then once we sort set the name we are getting the name and verifying that the name which we set initially is equal to the name we are getting after creation creating a reference similarly you can keep adding uh, for your for your next assignment after this workshop you can modify this and add the put patch and delete request okay based on the same framework 